Hey guys, Dave from Nerdarchy, four nerds by nerds, hanging out, this nerd. Nerdark is Ted. And in this video we ask, is it worth playing a Pack of the Chains Warlock? We we'll start this video by thanking our sponsor, Easy Roller Dice, for all your dice rolling needs, whether it's your first set of dice or your one millionth set of dice, Easy Roller Dice. Down in the description below, you can find a one-time coupon code to get 20% off, as well as a special link, Easy Roller Dice backslash Nerdarchy. Go get your Easy Roller Dice. All right, so today we're going to talk familiars. Yeah, the, you know, we're going to talk about the Pack of the Chains Warlock. We're going to talk about familiars. Is Pack of the Chains really the weakest uh, Warlock pack you can take, or Patron Boon you can take? Is it worth it? It's the only thing outside of, you know, wizardry or taking the, the feat that's going to allow you to get access to the spell, find familiar. It's the only way to get a, a familiar. And there's a lot of people who really dig the pet. They really like having the having the thing. There's In some of the later books, there are other things that you can get as familiar options. But Warlock specifically calls out that you can get an imp, a quasit, a pseudo dragon, or a sprite. As a familiar. And I would extend that to any of the other special familiars that come out afterwards. I mean, as a GM, just saying, like, if you're getting an imp, you can probably get, you know, a gazer or something as well. Unicorn monkey, the unicorn rabbit or the flying monkey. Well, uh, some, <laughs> of the, some of the tiny animals, sure, maybe. If they had the familiar sidebar, absolutely. And if they fit the role of this, they're the same of an owl or something like that, sure, why not? I guess the problem is D&D is a very combat-heavy centric game for the most part. And a lot of your familiars are not going to have a lot of value. Like, they can use the help action maybe to, you know, give an advantage on an attack. You can cast your touch spell, so that's nice. I mean, you got an owl familiar, you got vampiric touch, the owl swoops in, reaction, uses your attack roll to make the attack swoops out, has flyby attack, doesn't have to worry about attacks of opportunity. You know, very useful that way. But I'm the GM. I'm gonna be like, all right, you just annoyed my monster. If one of them has a bow, they're probably going to take it out. That's the crux of it. You know, typically in our games, if you have an ally, you have something that doesn't take part in combat, then it's usually going to be safe. But the second that it starts having combat effectiveness... It's going down. It's a valid target. <laughs> exactly. I don't even say it's going down, but it's, it's become a valid target. And <laughs> Given how many hit points familiars have, it's going down. Well, that being said, you know, hey, you know, some of them can turn invisible or sense your emotions. That that is true. <laughs> <laughs> so let, let's kind of get into like what our choices are. So all the tiny normal animals that you expect from for familiar, you can get any of those. One of the things I kind of overlooked is the fact that you get the find familiar spell. And you can cast it as a ritual, as a tome, as a Pact of the Chains Warlock. And, like, I just, my mind instantly went to everyone is getting an imp or a quasit or a pseudo-dragon. That is it. There is nothing else worth taking. Why would you bother? And that's what you had. But that's not really the case. You can cast that spell over and over again and resummon your familiar as much as you want or send them away as much as you want and give them a new form every time. I feel like the, that gives the familiar a lot of out of combat uses, especially if you start pairing it with some of the other invocations that you can get later on as a warlock. Now, the thing you have to look at, and it's really only a, an issue for the low level characters, but casting the spell find familiar does have a 25 gold, gold piece requirement. So that is going to be a resource drain if you are looking to, oh, well, can I do this, can I do that? You know, if you're going to use it over and over again, that's going to add up. Yeah, well, there is that depending on the style of game you're playing and how many, how much resources you have availability. But if it's like, okay, well, we need to sneak, you know, into a dungeon. All right, so, you, you know, you, you can have it sneak in. You can look around. You've got the ability to, as an action, see through its eyes, hear what it hears. You're using its senses. Now, yeah, your, your body is deaf and blind, but probably surrounded by your party, so you're fine. And there's no repercussions if the rat, you know, comes up comes up into something and activates a trap or, you know, something kills it. It just poofs. So it's still that's not enough a reason to not use one of the special familiars because uh, most of them are very stealthy. The gazer is the only one, which is basically a little beholder, guys, which I think is really cool. But that's the only one that doesn't have the same stealth capabilities as some of the other ones. So, but I was thinking, well, how, you know, how could you use it? When would it be useful? 
Now, there might be some places that you need something even smaller, like a snake or something to get into. So you might do that. Or maybe you need a different superior sense that that particular animal has. So you might do that. Or what I was thinking is the, the one familiar that rarely ever gets chosen, and that's the quipper. Right. So what if, you know, you needed something aquatic so you could dismiss your imp and come call forth, you know, a piranha instead, send that down to scout out and look, look at things. So you might do that. You might use it, you know, you might send it in the sewers or someplace. But technically, if it's a hundred, if it's within a hundred feet of you, you could use your magical power to talk to a fish. Uh <laughs> Yes, I, yeah, Sorry, I guess make, so. Making the Aquaman joke. Sorry, <laughs> my power, my power to talk to to uh, sea life isn't helping me now. But no, yeah, uh, th- but that's also the invocate one of the invocations. So I guess we could get into that. So the one of the the cool invocations you can take is voice of the chain master. What that does is basically gets rid of that limit on how far telepathically communicate with your your familiar. But it also lets you speak through them in your voice. I think that's what you're t- referring to. Although, I don't know how useful that's going to be. Like, if you, you're speaking to the fish. As, no, as no, you. I, I, was, I was merely just, you know, joking around about, you know, being able to communi- tele- communi- communicate telepathically to your familiar. You're technically having the ability to talk to You're them. Aquaman, yeah. is that what you're saying? Yes. But, you know, having, having the voice of the chain master... You know, that breaks your, your limit of how far you can communicate with it. Like, you want to send it further away than that 100 feet to scout. Okay, you know, you keep doing it every so often. You know, you peer through its eyes, see what it sees. Go, well, it, it can communicate with you telepathically, too. So the other thing is you don't have to deafen and blind yourself in order to do that. You you can allow the fish to go out and do the thing, the familiar. And then if something of interest comes up, then, like you said, you can you could switch swap senses with it. And see what's going on for yourself. Yeah, so, so it does give you some more options. Also, this is like, oh, well, if I want to go parlay with someone or you, you want to try diplomacy, but you don't really trust the other side, you can then send your familiar. So if they kill that, it's not you dying. That is true. <laughs> like, okay, well, there's there goes 25 gold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, but it saved my skin. You know, so that gives you some more options like that. And then the other one's Chains of Sarsi, and that basically lets you cast whole monster for free once per day on particular creatures, fey, celestial, fiends, elementals. So, like, those are the those are the two invocations that you kind of benefit from by going with Pack of the Chains. So, so I feel like when you're going to go with any particular boon, you're usually going to take those invocations and kind of double down on it. More so with Pack of Chains because... The familiar in itself doesn't give you a lot of great stuff. So you, you have to think of ways of making it better until you get to the special familiars. And three of them give you magic resistance. And that in and of itself is pretty darn powerful. Like, I up until this point, I pretty much like, yeah, Warlock, Pack of the Chains, what did you take it for? Oh, right. Magic, magic resistance. resistance. Like, th- that's like, I'm just going to name him MR. Like, <laughs> me, MR, my little friend here, and he's never going to leave my side. He just stays <laughs> invisible and hidden. <laughs> you know, to give you magic resistance. And to, to many, that's totally worth it. You don't have to go anymore, Warlock. I, I did this. I got that. I'm done. I'm going to go another path now. But, you know, that being said, there is a lot more interesting things you could do. And there are other, some other special familiars like the Sprite where tactically and combat-wise he doesn't have a lot to offer, but he makes a good scout. He makes a good scout. If you're going back to the Ancients, the the Sprite is another connection to that Feywild that you're going to actually have. It, it, there's going to be some more, another layer of role-playing that I think you know could be used there. And then also they have their, uh, their Heart Sight ability, what kind of lets them detect emotions and the feel of someone. The only tricky part is about this is they have to actually touch them. And it also can discern the alignment as well if that creature fails a saving throw. Unless it happens to be undead or a fiendish or celestial creature, then it can automatically they automatically fail that save. So you could definitely use it and get some, some uses that way. They also have ability to use, I believe they use like a sleep poison or something as well. But I mean, they're super weak. They have like two hit points. They are, they are crunchy. Squishy. That's not crunchy. 
You know, it, it depends on how you how you like them, fried, sauteed, whatever. <laughs> yeah, given a given a magic missile is guaranteed to take it out. That's why he needs to be invisible at all times so he cannot be targeted. Uh, then the other special familiar would be a gazer, and they're just cool because they look like little beholders, and they get two attacks around, which is something no one, no one, none of the other familiars really do, and they get a special attack. So that's, that's kind of cool. They get the eye rays. The only bad thing is their DCs are very low. They they are, and you know you just kind of have to have to roll with it. You have to hope to figure out the monster's weak saves, and kind of correspond the attacks to that because they do get a they have a variety at least. We touched on you know combat and and scouting, but familiars really do have a whole nother you know, layer or layers to them. You know, I touched, you know, briefly on Pact of the Ancients, Pact of the Chains, and got a sprite. You know, there's more role-playing that could be done there. And that that really does speak to having a, a companion. That that speaks to that whole pet angle of things that you've got something that's gonna that's gonna stick with you. Even if you are going with that, well, I am your master and you are my servant, you know, it's still there. It's still another role-playing tool. It's still some something that you get to play off of. Yeah, there's a lot of role playing aspects that a player might want to have, have a companion for, or have a, a familiar for. A companionship being one of them, they can act as guardians and guard a particular area. They could be assistants for you if you're you're doing any kind of research or experimentation or that kind of stuff. So that can be very rewarding and might be a reason to do it. So it just depends what you're trying to get out of the game. You know, I had a player in my game that had an imp and it, you know more than anything it was more of a role playing tool than any use in the game sometimes they would ask for information and i'd be more uh, lenient in that direction you know because it was a special familiar and it's a huge part of that character's ability that's another area but there's no rules on that that just that requires your gm to be generous and go you know what you've invested in this aspect of your character so here are some things that isn't written anywhere, but I want to give you, but you, because it's kind of fun and cool. I think that you know boils down to what what familiars can do and what you can do with them. If you guys have any other thoughts that you want to see about familiars, down in the comments below, continue that conversation. While you're down there, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. On your way down to the comments, don't forget to check the description for that coupon code for twenty percent off. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.